And we are back with another virtual Cardinal's Nest. I'm the faculty athletic representative for St. Mary's University, Dean Beckman. And this is the show where we talk about St. Mary's athletics. Donnie Netto is our sports information director, currently perched high above in our brand new press box. Right, Donnie? <laughs> right right yep. next to the soccer field? Yep, that's where we are. <laughs> <laughs> someday, someday that's, that's what right. it'll, okay. that's what the view will look like, right? And uh, we welcome Paul Jennison to his first Cardinals Nest appearance. Paul is our brand new women's soccer coach at St. Mary. So, Paul, welcome to the Cardinals Nest. We wish it could be in person in the HBC studios, which yeah. is where we normally record. But uh, but hey, any way we can get it done, we get it done. So, Paul, welcome to the Cardinals family. Thank you very much, lads, and obviously brilliant to uh, to have the chance to have a chat with both of you today, and, and certainly looking forward to to getting out on that field, Danny, when we get the opportunity there right behind where you, you're currently at. I, I hear you there. Now, now, Paul, before we get to questions for you, I've got to ask a question for Donny. Um, Donny, we went from Neil Cassidy's accent to Paul Jenniston's accent. Uh, your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if there's a requirement for our women's soccer coach that uh, that they have to have a that they have to have an accent. And I have to tell you, Coach, uh, the story I always told uh, Coach Cassidy was he would talk to me after five minutes. I would just look at him and say, "I have no idea what you just said. At least I can understand what you're saying." So that's a bonus for me. <laughs> this, Welcome aboard, Coach. Thing, and, and uh, coach, if you wouldn't mind, just uh, talk to us a little bit about about uh, your journey to St. Mary's. Uh, you know how you got involved in soccer to begin with. Obviously, where you come from, because it isn't from Winona, Minnesota, with that accent. But uh, just kind of give us a history of uh, of your trek all the way to uh, St. Mary's. Absolutely, and and again, lads, thanks very much for having me. Certainly appreciate this uh, this chance to have a chat with you. Uh, very fortunate, lads. You know, back home, home is uh, Middlesbrough, which is up in the northeast of England. Um, I had a great opportunity back there when I was uh, playing in my uh, younger days when I was a young lad growing up. I uh, had the opportunity to, to go the traditional route of uh, as much, most young players do, trying to, to make it in the professional game, but unfortunately just wasn't necessarily going to make it to the level that I was looking for. And you know, got the opportunity to come out here uh, and play in the States at Auckland College in Champaign, Illinois, which was an unbelievable opportunity for me. Uh, two great years there with a fantastic coaching staff and team. Uh, and then got the opportunity to transfer to Eastern Illinois. Um, got to play some Division One soccer and, you know, again, brilliant town, brilliant setup, uh, great coaching and teammates. And, uh, and, and that got me my bachelor's degree in uh, physical education teaching. Um, I always had a passion to go into the college game coaching, but coming right out of college, I ended up as a PE teacher in the West Suburbs of Chicago uh, and as a head coach of the boys' varsity team. Um, I told myself I would only do it for a year, uh, nine years later, and uh, I'd been the boys' and girls' head coach there for, for eight, nine years, and a terrific experience, but it, uh, as often find yourself at a crossroads, I got the opportunity to go to Northwestern University in Chicago, uh, coach under two terrific uh, mentors and work with some of the best players in the country and one of the best, you know, establishments for academics in the country. And I couldn't really say no. Uh, three brilliant seasons and then the opportunity to come up here to St. Mary's, it was uh, too good a chance to pass. And, and again, just on my drive up here for the opportunity and the interview, I, you know, I was kind of, I was thinking to myself how fortunate I would be if it worked out and, and meeting everyone in, in the town and at the school, it, uh, it, it was truly great. And, and I won't lie, I'll, I'll tell her, I, I thought that the thing that was the most fascinating for me was I, uh, I stopped at a coffee shop in town and somebody was genuinely interested as to what I was doing in town. And me stopping to get the coffee was a 15 minute conversation. So I knew there and then that it was gonna be a great place to be and spend, uh, spend quite a bit of my time and, and Hopefully, bring some success to the program. Well, Coach, I, we're we're thrilled to have you on board. But I have to I have to ask, you know, any time that you take over a, a program for the first time, you be you you being a, a first time collegiate head coach, and you have no players to coach in the spring, it's got to be extra difficult for you. Not only having to get to know the St. Mary's community, but trying to figure out how to deal with a, a, a spring season that isn't there anymore. No, that you know that's that's very very true, Donnie. But I, I guess 
speaking to the team, I kind of flipped that to the opposite direction. And I, I when I had the opportunity to chat with them on the phone and brief very meetly, uh, sorry, meet uh, very briefly before, of course, everyone moved off campus was, hey, listen, we have the opportunity here to really build relationships and to really use this as, as everyone being on the same level. Um, we're not worried about playing time right now. We're not worried about wins and losses. We're not worried about you know, formations and strategies. We're just worried about finding out what's going to make each other better as people. And I think uh, we're very, very fortunate. There's not many other programs in the country can, can truly say that right off the bat. So I've got to believe that's our best way to, to move forward. Um, but again, the team has been brilliant. Uh, they seem super positive, super excited, uh, very, very willing and, and being open to new ideas. And I, I think that obviously, once we get the opportunity uh, to get back on a pitch, um, hopefully we're going to make a little magic happen. Paul, in your journey to St. Mary's, you alluded to a lot of adjustments that you had to make in your own life. You had to come from England to the United States, uh, men's soccer, now to women's soccer, division one to division three. Have you been able to um, sort of use the experience with making those types of adjustments to kind of helping uh, some of the players on your team now uh, with the rapid adjustment they've had to make from in-person education to online education? Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a brilliant question. You know, I, I think the best advice I could ever give with anything like that is that, listen, I know enough to know that I don't know everything. And mistakes are going to happen along the way in everything that's currently happening in, in time right now um, to anything that we're going to do as a soccer program. And, and I think that's okay. I think that developing your craft in any way you can and having that growth mindset uh, it, it's really the best opportunity just to continue to learn. And, and I think if you'd have asked a, a young me 10 years ago, 15 years ago, he would have taken not knowing the answer as a negative. Um, but now I, I think that my advice to all of them was, that, listen, if I don't have it, I'll find someone for you that does. And same thing for all of you. If you're not sure of what's going on, let's just stick in there and be positive. And we're going to find the best way to, to learn how to master the situation that we're currently in. You know, I know, I know that, uh, you haven't had a lot of time on campus because of because of all this, but can you talk a little bit about the differences for you, for you know, me being here for 25 years, never experiencing what it's like to be at a Big Ten school like Northwestern? What are some of the huge differences? And then maybe what are the, some of the things that a small school has the advantage over a bigger school like that? That's brilliant. Well, I'll tell you geography wise, I mean, obviously being up in the bluffs is absolutely spectacular. So it's a little different to, uh, to Lake Michigan. But, you know, I, I think just the, again, a high academic school in both places I'm at right now. But I think that the division, the difference between Division One and Division Three is really the balance um, in terms of maybe that, that winter and spring not being as prominent at the Division Three level, uh, which, again, is, is absolutely fine. And I think it's really trying to find what um, is going to work best for our student athletes. And at the same time, you've obviously, you're well aware that when they're in the fall season, they're all in. So I, I really don't see much change in that. Um, to be honest, I've not seen any difference in the attitudes of our student athletes and, and all the professionals I've met so far. People want to win. They want to help people develop. They want to be successful at what they want to do. And ultimately, they want to make things around them better. So for me, I, I don't see much difference in that other than the, the putting numbers on a spring season per se. I've been very, very impressed with, with all the establishments I've worked so far. And, and again, consider myself incredibly fortunate to, to have the opportunities that I've had. Paul, I'm sure in preparation for uh, coming here for the interview and, and since you've had the position now, you've had a, a little chance to watch some game film. Uh, your impressions of the team that you're inheriting and also uh, the, the competition in the MIAC. You know, I, I think obviously that our biggest thought process is going to be the program we've got. I, I think the teams that we're going to play against, it, it's a great conference. They're, they're always going to be good. Um, they're always going to do well. But I'm very impressed with what we've got. I think the work that has gone previously was excellent. I mean, the players that are here, the, the one thing that we've all got as a common interest is St. Mary's. And we all want to get better and we all want to do well for the school and the community. So I'm excited. I'm very respectful of all the hard work that's gone before. Uh, and I'm also, you know, very, very uh, optimistic that just putting one or two things of maybe my own style in there, my own personality to what we do, 
Well, I said, at the same time, respecting all the hard work that's gone on previously through coaches and players, you know, we're going to keep things moving forward. I know last season was a, a very, very strong record. And I think we've got a great building block to, to move forward from. You know, Coach, I know we, we hit on this a little bit, but, uh, you know, not having the spring season, especially as a, as a new head coach, that those, those weeks that you would have been able to work with your, with your individuals, you know, obviously nobody gets those. But how do you overcome that as you come into the fall? Because really, in a way, you might actually be a little bit behind because if you do want to implement any new systems or any new strategies, you've got to do that in the fall when you've got that short preseason before the regular season starts. Uh, how do you kind of adjust that or how do you, how do you go about uh, overcoming that obstacle? No, again, brilliant. I, I think I will go back to, to maybe my answer previously about building relationships. Um, I think the trust factor is going to be absolutely massive for our team. Uh, and I think that ultimately, you know, the, the X's and O's, sure, they, they can have opportunities to win and lose your games, but it's going to be coaches and players that are going to be successful and fail. And I think ultimately, if the, the team knows that my investment in them is something that's going to build to a trust and hopefully, as I said, have them adapt to new ideas, that's got to be our priority right now. And I think, obviously, for me as a coach, understanding that, you know, that holistic piece of what helps each player work individually and how, how they respond to, to certain coaching styles, that's only going to help us in the long run. So I think that we're, we're just going to keep taking that from um, the learning piece, getting to know each other. And again, it gives me more chance to understand the program, understand why people value St. Mary's like they do. And I think most importantly, you know, when, even when we get back to that first day, that true day one, which it will be, there's going to be such energy and such optimism and, and such spark ready to go. That it's going to be tough to contain it. And I think we're just going to use that to the best of our advantage and just hit the ground running. And any other cliche you've got for soccer, can you throw it out there? And, uh, you know, we'll definitely be super excited when that can go on for uh, Paul, um, what about for you uh, from a professional development standpoint, as Donnie mentioned earlier, going from assistant coach, to now this being your first head coaching position, what has this time allowed you uh, to do maybe a little bit more of in the way of uh, preparing to be a head coach? Well, again, I've always been very fortunate within the game in, in positions of, of leadership. And, you know, I, I think that Rather than saying this was a great opportunity to be a head coach, I think it was just a good opportunity to have a leadership opportunity uh, and a good chance to, to have a positive influence on maybe a larger scale. So I think regardless of what you're doing in the coaching realm, whether you're a second assistant head coach, at some point you are going to have a positive or negative influence over people. I think the only difference is maybe now that the culture can be driven from my perspective a little bit more. Um, but other than that, I think you, you're always preparing to be the, the best of yourself and trying to master your craft as a coach and, and most importantly as an educator. So I, I wouldn't really tell you that I've done anything different. I've certainly used the opportunity to, to plan and prep for the fall. So there is no doubt that I hope I don't overwhelm and give too much information uh, and be in a rush to show what I know. But at the same time, I think that's why we're trying to build that trust factor so they understand that the information that we're given really is in their best interest and, and not just a sense of, hey, I'm throwing everything at you because it shows that I'm a great coach. It's not necessarily on that realm. And, and Paul, the final thing for me is I'm glad that Donnie got the red memo, but he did miss the armor, <laughs> Under Armour memo that was part of that. This so. is true, right? This is true. Well, I was just going to ask, just to close it out, uh, a lot of times we'll ask coaches how their family handles the fact that in your season and, and really all season long, you're away a lot. You're working a lot because of, because of the sport. You're always probably always thinking soccer. How is your family handling having – Coach Jennison at home all the time. Well, our, uh, our daughter, my wife and I, our daughter is nearly two years old. So I, I have been very, very fortunate to have daddy daycare for the last few weeks, which it's been the best thing in the world. I, I mean, again, that, that's a situation that uh, really is incredibly lucky for me as a, as a, a new dad. Uh, my wife's working from home. So, I mean, she, her and I see each other quite a lot. Uh, but at the same time, her... Her schedule is, uh, is fairly set, so I, I don't think that's too much of a, 
a concern. But I would tell you, obviously, going through the round before, you know, when I was a high school coach, it was fall and spring in Illinois. So I was never not in season. Um, so it was always year round for me. And obviously, my wife has been incredibly supportive over the last 10 years and has given me a lot of opportunity to really go out there and search the dream. Uh, so I, I would tell you, she is well and truly understanding and uh, knows what to expect. Uh, if the best thing I could tell you, though, is that the reality is now it's it's maybe not to bring the emotions home with you, uh, wins our losses, and and try and just stay on an even keel as much as possible. So, so far it's been great. We, we've had a lot a lot of fun with the family, and uh, obviously, as much as we're enjoying that, we are super excited to to get out there when we do get the possibility and, and making sure State Marys can get some wins on the pitch. Well, we're certainly happy to have you on staff, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with you over the years. Definitely. You guys too as well. I certainly appreciate it. All right. Paul Jennison is our new women's soccer coach at St. Mary's. Uh, Paul, thanks for joining us here on the virtual Cardinals Nest and introducing yourself to the Cardinals family. Cheers, lads. Appreciate it. Take care. Good luck and go Cardinals. All right. That'll do it for this Cardinals Nest. Thanks for watching.